everyone, and welcome to Facebook Live. My name is actually likes the water. Can you guys guess who it is? It's a fishing cat. You might be able to see Anna right now looking at our um, pool over there. She's actually exploring some of her um, food items that were placed around, but we'll see if she starts to fish momentarily. Now, um, Anna, like I said, she's um, exploring the habitat. Um, we have four fishing cats here, and hopefully you'll be able to see her fish real soon. Um, we did put some um, live fish in the pool for her. Now, fishing cats lure fish to the surface of the water by lightly tapping on the surface with their paws to mimic an insect landing in the water. When they will scoop up the fish with their partially web feet or they will dive right in, often getting their head totally under the water for those fish. Fishing cats are found in South and Southeast Asia along areas of water, which include wetlands, swamps, mangroves, rivers, and marshes. While fishing cats are thought to have no natural predators, they are listed as vulnerable in the wild. Oh, she's in the pool now. Let's see if she gets Their major threat is the destruction, destruction of wetlands in their natural habitat. It has been estimated that about 50% of Southeast Asian wetlands are disappearing as the human population grows. These wetland areas are affected by pollution, overfishing by humans, and the use of chemical fertilizers at farms that drain into wetlands. Other threats that face fishing cats is hunting, poaching, and illegal trade. There are things that we can do to help though, like educating people about fishing cats and the threats that is facing their natural habitat. People can also support clean water initiatives and not only recycle, but reduce our plastic usage overall. Let's see if she those fish. And maybe you guys can see her uh, tapping at the water or just diving right in. Do we have any questions coming in yet about the fishing cats? What other cats like water? Oh, good question. I mean, we you do see some of the other big cats go in the water. Like we have a pool um, for our tigers outside. Um, they they will spend some time in the water. So it's it's kind of a misconception that cats hate the water, but there are definitely some that enjoy it more than others. So I see her scratching on that log there. What similarities do they have to like a domestic house cat? Um, they're, they're actually very similar in regards to their behavior. I mean, most domestic house cats, you know, are, uh, well, they're kind of territorial. So uh, fishing cats will actually mark their territory by urine spraying. So they have a very strong scent or also the cheek rubbing, the head rubbing, so I'm, you know, for those of you that have cats at home, you might see your cat rub a wall or something with its cheek or something. Um, fishing cats will do the same to mark their territory. And then they have, you know, obviously the um, claws that they need to sharpen up um, at times. The, the fishing cat paws are actually um, partially webbed, so that helps them get the fish out of the water. And their claws are actually kind of semi-retractable. Can you remind us which animal this is? This is Anna. She's our female fishing cat. Um, she is the dam. She's about eight years old. Um, we have a total of four fishing cats. Um, the sire that we had of the last litter, um, Chet, it's actually his birthday today, so he's 11. Happy birthday, um, Chet. Oh, I think she just might have spotted a fish. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> um, so he's off exhibit, and then we have their two kids from um, the litter that we had about four years ago, um, Bali and Kayuma. And we do rotate the animals on exhibit, so they each have, you know, some exhibit time and some off, ex off exhibit or off habitat time. Time, um, she's, she's a great fisher, so we wanted to make sure that you guys were able to see that in action. <laughs> I see she's looking at a fish right now. Yeah, let's see what she does. Now you can see how she listen. You know, she kind of looks down. She's using those paws now to. They're they may be not the most graceful at times, but a lot of times they will dive in, dive in and like. She seems so graceful. Like, come on, you gotta. You gotta really work for it. 
Uh, let's see. Can you tell us how big is she? Like, how much does she weigh? How big does she get? Um, well, let's see. Uh, Anna is, like I said, she's about um, 11. No, I'm sorry. She's about 8 years old. And she is roughly 15 pounds. Um, she came to Brookfield Zoo in uh, December of 2011. She was actually born in France. Um, so she came here in a breeding recommendation. Um, so she's about an average size for females. Uh, males will get a little bit larger as is fairly common with you know most cat species. The males tend to be a bit larger than the females. So Chet, the, um, her uh, mate, that they're not together right now obviously because we don't want breeding at the present time. Um, but Chet's about 24 pounds, and our kids, Bali and Kayuma, about 25 to 28 pounds. Are they solitary, or do they live in groups? They are solitary, as with most cats. Um, the, the youngsters will stay with the moms, so dads really have no um, parental care at all uh, once she's pregnant. Um, so once we do the breeding intros, and if we were we saw the breeding um, we would separate um, once her estrus is over we would separate mom and dad and then uh, she would give birth to her kittens and they would stay with her about maybe two years or so depends on um, how long she'll tolerate them <laughs> um, with this last litter she was like okay you guys are done at about a year and a half <laughs> um, but uh, she um, will separate them out, and they, they are solitary. Most cats are, you know, just solitary unless it's breeding time. Are, <laughs> she's really going after it now. Are keepers able to interact with them at all? Can you, well, can you pet them? No, we can't pet them. Um, they're very quick and very sharp uh, claws. Um, we don't go in with them. We do shift them on and off um, their habitat. Um, and we work with them in what we call a protective contact setting. So that's uh, very typical with us and all of the cats that we have here. Um, we don't go in with them and uh, it, that's just for our safety as well because they, you know, have sharp claws, sharp teeth. Um, and it also helps us uh, to do some various training behaviors so we can get them to shift on and off their habitat. Um, we're able to train them um, to say enter a crate, to do like a pause up, a mouth open. All those behaviors allow us to care for them, to check the condition of their teeth, their gums, their nails, um, see if there's any, you know, injuries. If we saw that maybe she was limping, we can ask her to do a pause up and see on the underside of her foot to see if, you know, maybe she had a, you know, scratch and abrasion of some sort. Um, we're also able to do like a, a target training to get her to move from one location to another. Um, so lots of different training behaviors that allow us to care for them. Um, and again, like it's, it's all in a protective contact setting so that neither of us can hurt. How can you tell the various cats that we have here apart? I'm sorry, the various fishing cats. Um, <laughs> Not like, how do you tell a tiger yeah, apart a tiger from a fishing from cat? Her. Um, that's, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, well, like I said, um, I mean, she's obviously a lot smaller than the boys, so she's the only female that we have here. Um, um, she's, you know, roughly a little less than half the size of them. Um, but the other guys, we just kind of go by um, facial features, um, distinguishing characteristics. Chet, for example, has a much lighter coat color overall. Um, so he's less, I mean, he's more gray, but less stripey. Um, and so we just kind of look for different characteristics when, especially when the um, two boys were young and together, we had to make sure that we were able to tell who was who. Um, so we just look for different patterns in their coats um, and able to see it that way. Now, fishing cat coats are actually pretty interesting because because they're such an aquatic cat, they have um, a, a special coat where they have their guard fur, um, the guard hairs, which gives the, the cat the coat color and pattern, um, and that helps with camouflage, but they also have like a undercoat for them so that actually kind of keeps them waterproof. So when they're in the water, in the wild, they're not getting um, wet, their skin's not getting wet, and they're not getting cold. Um, 
in the in their natural habitat. How many kits do they generally have at one time? Um, usually one to four is a typical litter, litter size, um, but they kind of average out about two kittens per litter. Are they endangered? They're considered um, vulnerable at this time. Um, uh, like I said, they, they're facing a lot of threats, mostly with the habitat um, loss um, and the overfishing um, that you know humans are doing in their natural habitat. So, you know, there's a lot of concern for what um, where they can live in the wild. Um, as far as their natural habitat and if there's destruction, there's becoming more of a conflict between humans and fishing cats. And a lot of people that actually live in the Southeast Asian areas where fishing cats are from, um, they are finding that cats are kind of getting close to livestock because there's just more, um, there's less of a distance between humans and fishing cats. So it's, it's becoming a problem, but there are some good organizations that are actually working on educating the people that live there and giving them alternate um, ways of dealing with fishing cats and also alternate ways of like farming um, to make it more sustainable for them um, and that way it's, it's less of a human cat conflict. What do they eat besides fish? Um, well, in the wild, it would be primarily fish, but then they would go for like small mollusks or, you know, um, even small rodents, birds. Um, here at the zoo, they get over, they actually get quite a, a lot of fish. 75% of their diet is actually made up of fish. Um, so here at the zoo, their staple diet is um, smelt, herring, and um, capelin every day, and then they get one of three rotational fish every day as well. So we rotate through Pangasia, sole, and haddock um, in addition to their meat um, portion of their diet. But like I said, 75% of their diet is fish. Out of all of those, what would you say is their favorite fish? Um, they definitely like the rotational fish the most, um, haddock, sole, and pangasius. Um, and then they also seem to really like the um, herring Certain of the cats are very picky though, like Chet, for example, doesn't like when you feed the whole herring, he <laughs> likes certain parts, whereas Anna prefers a whole fish. Oh my um, so it's funny how they all have their little quirks and their little um, personalities. So there's say. another similarity to house cats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, that, I'm sorry. That made me forget the next question I was going to ask. <laughs> Hold on, give me, give me a second. Oh, yeah, yes. no worries. Enrichment. What? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, guys. I don't mean to move the camera around so much. What kind of enrichment do they get? They, um, actually, fishing cats seem to like scents a lot. So aside from the, you know, the live fish that we put in the pool, but we don't do it all the time because otherwise it would lose its novelty. Um, but they like scents a lot. So we'll actually have some perfumes or some spices, everyday spices, like say paprika or, you know, things like that, cinnamon, um, um, but really a lot of perfumes, especially Chet seems, Ooh. whoa, she found that one. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, I can't even keep up. He, they really seem to enjoy that. They also like paper products a lot. They like to just shred up, you know, boxes or paper, um, paper bags. Um, so we're, you know, we do a lot of food scatters. Um, we'll put some items, like aside from fish, we'll um, put some like this uh, uh, rock that's in the floating in the pool, sometimes they interact with um, items like that. Where can people find them in the zoo? So we are in the Clouded Leopard Rainforest. Um, we are right next to the Binarong exhibit. Um, so this is, yeah, our fish and cat exhibit. The East End, kind of by uh, Pinnipeds over there. Okay. Can Fishing cats swim, like like dive, dive down, yeah. way down yeah, into the water. Yeah, um, are you know they, we do see them um, kind of dive into the deeper. She's in the more shallower section of our pool. Um, the one above is a little bit deeper, um, so we do see her kind of wade in um, and go underneath. Um, so they will dive underneath, and you know especially if there was something really interesting for them like even a duck they've been known to like take down ducks that are swimming in the um 
in a you know a marsh or something like that so yeah they will definitely dive and go submerged underwater is there a specific place in their habitat that they prefer to hang out in um mostly like i said they um will live along any kind of water edge um they you know will hide out in you know like grasses or um kind of take cover and that kind of um place like i said there's not really a, a natural um predator that has been really found for these guys in the wild um but they still like that um area of cover that they can go to and anything along a, a water's edge can you remind us what their lifespan is these guys um typically are 10 to 12 years um in captivity we've had some that lived into their mid-teens here um but yeah 10 to 12 is uh, it's pretty typical for a fishing cat um obviously a little less in um, the wild um, but they don't really have a whole lot of info on that i know you mentioned that anna and chet are separated right now because it's not breeding season right so do do we always put them together during breeding season or do we have to wait for a recommendation great question um we do wait for the recommendations like i said we still have um the kittens from the previous litter so what how the ssp works which is the species survival program they will um recommend that you know cat a and cat b will breed um so in our case we had chet and anna as the pair um yeah. <laughs> and they've bred successfully twice we've had two litters here um, but they generally tell us, you know, once you have kittens, you have to hold them for a certain period of time. We'll place them and then we just wait for the next breeding recommendation. So they're usually for the most part separated and then we'll put them together for breeding purposes when we get the green light to do so. Um, and then, like I said, we'll just watch for signs of estrus. So for the female fishing cats, it'll be a lot of calling and they have a very interesting call. They'll actually sound kind of like a wah, 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 and that's their call. It's very interesting. Um, so we'll hear that sound. We'll smell a lot more of a strong urine smen scent around their habitat. Um, the males will even call. So there'll be a lot more co um, communication calls. Some females will actually go a little bit off of food when they're in estrus. We haven't seen that too much with Anna, but we've had previous cats that do that. Um, and then we'll know, like, if we were to get a recommendation, that, that would be a good time to do the physical intro. About how, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> about how long will it take her to find and eat all those fish? Um, it just depends on how interested it, she is in um, them and then also how many we put in. I think we only gave her a, a few, like five or six. Um, so I, I don't know if I even see any more. Yeah, there might be a couple more in there. Um, I thought I still saw one swimming Okay, around. yeah. She so just, that, she kinda, they kind of go for it, and then they leave them, and then they'll come back later. It's just okay. variable. And can people uh, help share the care for them through our animal adoption program? Absolutely. Um, these guys are on our share the care program, which is our animal adoption program. So if you go on our website at czs.org, backslash animal adoption you can um, try to find a favorite animal that you have um, there's many animals that are adoptable um, through the share the care program and then that is a great way to help um, support you know the zoo and then the animals that you love well thanks again for joining us um, I hope you enjoyed watching Anna fish and um, we hope to see you real soon at the zoo I know as we're starting to open up just make sure you mask up Keep your social distance and stay safe out there. Thanks a lot.